Several months ago I made a video on first order transient circuits and in this video I'm going to expand upon that and provide a more formal approach to solving uh, these kinds of circuits. First thing you want to do is determine if you have a first order transient circuit. Um, to determine this you need to answer first of all do I have a transient? In this particular circuit we have a transient given by um, this flipping of a switch. The second question that you need to answer is do I have a single energy storage device? Energy storage devices in linear um, for linear components are inductors and capacitors. Recall that capacitors store a voltage in an electric field and inductors store current in a magnetic field. At least that's one way of thinking of them. Um, and they are energy storage devices. So we appear to have three in our circuit. However, they can be collapsed into a single uh, effective capacitance. So we have effectively a single energy storage device. All first order linear systems will be modeled by this particular equation um, and uh, we'll take a look at that in a moment. Maybe the hardest thing to grasp is that for these uh, first, second, and higher order transient circuits we need to remember that the uh, current through an inductor is a um, continuous function which cannot, which is time based and cannot change instantly. Similarly, the voltage across a capacitor uh, cannot change instantly. This is to contrast with Ohm's law equation, which basically describes that the voltage and the current in a resistor can change instantly. Um, and finally we're going to solve for these four unknowns. We'll take a look at this in just a minute. Um, uh, the time constants tau uh, for RC and LR uh, circuits are given here and um, if you were to actually go through and try and solve uh, a system you would get this equation and while you were solving that you would see that tau actually is uh, one of these values. Um, I'm not going to demonstrate that right now though. So the first thing we'll do is see my circuit. I ask the question uh, is it a first order circuit? Yes, it is. I want to draw it as a circuit with a single energy uh, storage device and a single transient. There it is. Okay. Um, I just combine the capacitors. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is remind myself what's the equation that I'm trying to solve here. Uh, and the reason I do this is because um, the more you write this equation down, the more you'll get it memorized. So we have x infinity plus x naught minus x infinity e minus t minus t zero over tau. Then what I like to do is write down all of the unknowns. x zero, x infinity, t zero, and tau. And I often um, try and solve them from easiest to most difficult. Generally you'll find that T0 is the easiest thing to solve. Usually it's going to be zero. Um, one case I can think of where it won't is if you're dealing with a unit step function you might be asked to find um, the equation at a particular point in time. Um, the next easiest one, uh, or the one that I generally solve next anyway, is the time constant tau. To do the time constant tau, you want to look at the resistance, 
the Thevenin resistance seen by the energy storage device after the transient has occurred. Okay, in this particular case, after uh, for t greater than zero. So when t is greater than zero, this opens up. Uh, we don't have any dependent sources, so we can just uh, treat this as a short. Not that it matters, right? Because this is open, so there's no current through that resistor. So if essentially, uh, I don't really need to write this, but I I will anyway. I like to draw lots of pictures to kind of help me think my way through it. Okay, this is R Thevenin through the capacitor, and it's going to simply just be 6k. So our time constant, because we're dealing with a capacitive and resistive network, is going to be RC. But one thing that I sometimes do is I'll do 1 over tau. Don't have to do this if you don't want to. And I'll do 1 over RC. The reason I do that is because then I can move tau, or I can move this answer that I get into the numerator, and it'll make my final equation look a little bit cleaner. Okay, so this is 1 over 6k times 4 micro. And if you do that all out, you'll find that um, tau equals, or 1 over tau equals minus, uh, sorry, equals 41 point six six repeating. Okay, so I'm going to just kind of draw this in here. 1 over t equals 41.67 repeating, or 67. Okay, now the next thing I'll do is I'll solve for x infinity. That's usually the easier of these two to solve. For x infinity, you just want to imagine what happens when I flip the switch. Well, what happened before I flipped the switch? Let's let's imagine what's happening over all of time here. So, uh, at some point infinitely in the past, this thing, this circuit was created, and there's a battery attached to it and the battery causes current to flow it causes the capacitor to get charged up eventually the capacitor gets fully charged and then it begins to act like an open and no more current uh, travels through that uh, through that branch of the circuit so all the current flows only through the resistors in this outer loop. Then we flip the switch. Now the battery gets disconnected from the circuit. So does the 6K resistor. And the capacitor, which had some charge on it, begins to drive a current through these two resistors. And eventually, all of the energy stored in the capacitor gets dissipated through the resistors. So in the end, there's no current traveling in this loop. There's no current. There's nothing happening anywhere in the circuit. And therefore, uh, recall, uh, too, by the way, that we're looking for V naught of T, right? So we want to know what happens at the resistor. Um, because there's no current flowing from the capacitor, there's no current flowing through the resistor and therefore this equals zero. Okay, but rec but notice what I what I just did here. I was interested in what happens at V of T, but all of my attention really goes to the energy storage device. What's happening with that energy storage device? We'll answer the question uh, for both of these. Sorry, this is X at infinity equals equals zero. Um, Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll try and answer the question, what happens to the voltage at the moment T equals zero? Recalling that the voltage across a uh, resistor can change instantly. 
but what can't change is the voltage across the capacitor. So that's what we want to determine is what is the voltage across the capacitor at t equals 0 minus and t equals 0 plus. So let's, uh, let's draw that. If I have a circuit that's been completely charged up, like this, the capacitor gets treated as an open. So let's see what the voltage across the capacitor is going to be. And we can just do a simple KVL equation here. Before I do that KVL equation, let me find the current, right? Because I'm going to need the current to know the voltage drop across this resistor. So that's going to be 6K plus 4K plus 2K is 12K. Um, 12 divided by 12K will tell me that I equals 1 milliamp. Okay, so KVL around this loop will show you that VC equals uh, 6 volts right? 12, uh, uh, minus, uh, 6 volts plus VC, or 12 minus 6 volts minus, uh, VC gives you 6 volts. Uh, so we know that VC at T mi 0 minus equals 6 volts and because we know that the energy can't change instantly we know that the moment after the flip uh, switch is flipped that the voltage on the capacitor is also 6 volts so that brings us to the next circuit diagram in which the battery has been disconnected and our circuit now looks like this and we're trying to answer that question again right V not at uh, at T equals 0 2k and 4k and keep in mind now that th this capacitor can kinda just be treated like a battery uh, one thing that you can get messed up on on some of these problems don't forget it how does the capacitor get charged so when you put charge on that capacitor make sure that you know how that charge is distributed because sometimes you'll find that the charge is driving a current uh, in a way that will make your uh, that will give you a negative sign that uh, you may not have anticipated. Okay, so keep your eyes peeled for that. In this particular place uh, situation, we uh, uh, use the passivity rule to determine that the capacitor was going to uh, accumulate a voltage using this particular sign uh, polarity and we're going to employ that same polarity over here and now we're going to think of it as a battery okay and we can now just use a voltage division to solve this so V naught uh, at zero by voltage division is going to be uh, six volts from the capacitor times 4k over the sum of the resistances which is 6k so it's going to be two-thirds of six which is four four volts so V naught equals four volts 
Okay, up here I was calling them x naught and x infinity because those are uh, generic terms. Now that we're ready to put together our final equation, we want to speak of this in the proper units. x infinity is zero, so we can ignore those terms, and we get four e to the minus 41.67 t and that is in volts and it also is only true for t greater than zero okay so that is our final solution and I hope that was helpful good luck